Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today we're going to be discussing two of the key ideas for around evolution that proposed by Darwin and a man named Lamarck. Okay, so each of these scientists had some uh, had, had some different ideas about how evolution or this descent with modification, this change over time might occur. And so we're going to go through and unpack their theories and kind of and, and think through how they relate to what we understand already. Okay. So firstly, we're going to discuss Lamarck's idea of evolution, which we're going to call that of acquired characteristics. And then we're going to talk through Darwin, and who so was helped by a, a naturalist named um, Alfred Wallace, the evolution by natural selection. So we're going to start by looking at Lamarck's idea. So um, make sure that you've got the, the, the printed sheet in front of you, ready to, to write notes into this relevant spaces. Okay. <clears throat> So in Lamarck's evolution, so we start off with um, a series of short-legged giraffes. And so you can see that the foliage high up in the trees. And so then as the giraffe needs to reach higher and higher up into the trees in order to reach the foliage, that it stretches and it grows taller and taller. As it grows taller, and then it, it goes on and it has more offspring, which become taller and taller with every successive generation until eventually we reach a point at which only long-necked giraffes remain. Tall, long-necked giraffes remain. So we've kind of progressed in kind of four sort of stages in the, those sort of images that you see there, that we've started from short-necked, short-legged giraffes, and then successively over generations, we've gotten taller with longer necks. Okay, so some of the, the now, so giraffes were kind of the classic case that Lamarck used to explain his ideas, but it, it kind of extends to other organisms as well. But so one of the key ideas about his idea was that it's driven by an inner need of the organism. You know, so in this case, it was the need of the giraffe to reach the foliage on higher kind of um, higher trees. Okay, perhaps it might be driven by a different kind of need. But so there's some sort of an inner need or an innate sort of thing in the organism. Okay. Um, and then these new needs or whatever these needs are produce new structures or anatomy so that the new need... Of, to reach the tops of the trees causes changes in the bone structure, in, in the, the, you know, the length and the muscles of the, of the giraffe so that it grows and as it stretches that then that kind of takes shape or that that, um, that, that kind of becomes part of what that organism is like. But then the flip side of that means that you know, if new needs mean that we get new structures or anatomy or better developed structures, that then things that we don't use very much, that are underused, they should be phased out over time. And we can see that that doesn't really make sense, like that, that not from generation to generation, that then, you know, as we, we use different parts less, that then that becomes less and less of a feature. You know, we still have an appendix, for example, even if it feels like it's underused, um, you know, over time. And then probably one of the, the easiest things that would be for us to understand, for you to see and understand, is that then what, what, we're, what Mark was suggesting is that every acquired characteristic um, is inherited by the new organism, okay? So that means tattoos, piercings, scars, all those sorts of things um, should pass on to our children or that you should have inherited from your parents. That you know as well as I do that if your parents have pierced ears or have tattoos or scars from things that happened in their lifetime, that those don't uh, aren't inherited by you, um, that they... You know, so they're things that happen purely to that organism that they are not inheritable. And so um, we can see that then um, that Lamarck's idea doesn't really make a lot of sense. You know, it, it sounds nice in theory, but that it's not actually, um, that under these sort of circumstances, it doesn't make, it doesn't play out. Okay, so let's have a look at Darwin and Wallace's idea of natural selection. Okay, so we have, um, we have short-necked, short giraffes. Okay, that... Gradually, over time, what we see is that there is some variation in the population, okay? That then some giraffes end up with um, longer necks than other giraffes. Those giraffes are the ones that are more able to reach the foliage on the high trees. They can get more food and therefore are more likely to survive. And those that have short necks and short legs and can't reach that food are more likely to die out. That then, over time, then those, those ones continue to die off. So you can see down the bottom here, so representing the dead, um, you know, the, the short kind of necked ones that die, that are less fit to survive. 
But then gradually over time, that what we see is that the, the ones that have the tallest necks or that, that variation um, in that population, those ones survive to reproduce and those that don't survive don't reproduce and they, they, they kind of die out. And that, so that gradually over time, what ends up happening is that only long-necked giraffes survive um, and that they, so, you know, so over generations that then the giraffes have, um, have changed over time, which is, so we call it, so that this idea of natural selection, that there's, um, there's a factor in the environment that then causes certain features to be, to make an organism more fit to survive than others. Um, and so then those that survive can reproduce and then those are the, the genes, the characteristics that get passed on and that those that die off, those things die out and that organisms aren't like that anymore. Okay, so what, the reason that, that we have adopted that this model of natural selection is that it accounts for variation in a population, okay? Because um, that then that, that Lamarck's idea didn't actually make sense for um, how, how we might end up with variations in, in, you know, just good, bad, indifferent sort of variations like eye colour or hair colour in humans, um, that they may not necessarily have a survival advantage, but um, Darwin's idea of these random variations um, yeah, as being part of that, you know, helps to, to be part of that understanding. We now understand that these um, are caused by what we call random gene mutations. So random things that change or that impact on genes, and that could be good, bad, or could just be, you know, indifferent. So, you know, people with blue eyes don't necessarily survive any better than those with brown eyes, um, but they're just different variations that come up, okay? Um, we recognise that not all acquired characteristics are necessarily inherited, like some of those things that we listed before. Um, some things are acquired and that are passed on, um, but that not everything. And it also, um, and, and, but, but Darwin's idea can, can make sense of that. And then also what we recognise is survival of the fittest, this kind of idea that those organisms that are best suited to their environment will survive and reproduce. Those that are less suited will die out. And also that there's other, other lines of evidence that we've looked at in the past that are accounted for better with Darwin's model. So the idea of adaptation over time, looking at the concepts of homologous structures when we do comparative anatomy, you know, those sorts of things um, make more sense with the Darwinian kind of model of how evolution might happen. Okay, so we've, we've gone through in this video these two kind of competing ideas, um, seeing that this change over time, and this is about the how, not about the what, and so then thinking that Lamarck's idea of acquired characteristics um, fits, um, doesn't fit as well with the evidence as Darwin and Wallace's model of natural selection. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.